everyone. Welcome to the 2019 Clio Cloud Conference. This morning in this Clio University track, we're going to be showing you the new mobile experience that Jack spoke about earlier, its enhancements, and how it can improve your day-to-day -day efficiency. My name is Calvin, and I'm a development manager at Clio. And that means that my responsibilities are to ensure that we make the correct technical choices, that we can deliver a, a secure, reliable, scalable mobile product that you can depend upon daily to do your most important work. And my name is Samir, and as a product manager at Clio, I'm ultimately responsible for understanding you, our customers. So I work to get a deep understanding of the ways in which you work, how you like to do your work, and ultimately to ensure that our mobile solutions, our mobile products, provide the right solutions to you. OK, we're going to be covering a couple of topics today, so let's take a look at those. First, we're going to be explaining why mobile technology is relevant and why legal professionals particularly should be taking attention to it. Then we'll show you how Clio's mobile products can improve your day-to-day -day efficiency um, while you're away from your desk or your office. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at what we've done over the last year where we announced the beta and how that propels us forward into the future. All right, so we're going to start off by talking about why should you care about mobile? Why does it actually matter in your work as a legal professional? Before we get into that, I actually want to take a poll of the room by a show of hands. How many of you here have a mobile phone with you? All right, so pretty much everyone. Um, how many of you have an iPhone? All right, and how many of you have an Android? All right, how about this? Who's using their phone to keep up with their firm while they're at this conference? Awesome, well, hopefully not during this talk. Um, but that's a great segue into this section. So 96% of legal professionals now use a smartphone for work purposes. So essentially the entire industry. What's even more interesting is that 76% of them are using their personal smartphone for this work. And that means that's a device that they have them on them all day, whether they're at work or at home or on the go. So we're moving away from the days of the clunky office phones that were chained to your desks and towards a future where your entire firm is in the palm of your hand. 85% of the industry now spends between four and six hours a week working on the go. So that's about an hour a day. And for 38% of them, it's 10 to 15 hours a week. And that's about two to three hours a day. So think about it, when you're, away f when you're working on the go, that means you're away from your desk, you're away from your office, you're away from your support staff, your admin, your computer, anything else that's, that's part of your office. Because ultimately, all of you have to work outside of the office on the go due to court hearings or depositions or meetings with clients. But in between these events, and sometimes even during them, you have to take phone calls, you have to look at emails, you get text messages from clients and firm members. At the end of the day, your business is still running while you're away from the office. And so it's clear that mobile is here to stay because it allows you to access this work while you're out of the office. And ultimately what that does is it prevents you from having to play catch up when you get back to your desk. Cool. Thank you, Samir. Those are some pretty interesting statistics. And my hope is that if you don't yet have mobile technology incorporated into your day-to-day, -day, these are in compelling enough reasons for you to go and take a second look at it. So now that we've identified why it's important, let's go take a look at how Clio's mobile products can help you. Firstly, there are two concepts that we should take some time to understand because they provide a lot of context for the content that's coming up. So access, this is the ability to find and know information. A couple of quick examples of, the, of this would be you're searching for a document that you need to review, or you're looking in your calendar for when you next need to be in court to represent your client, or you get a notification of an important secure message that you need to reply to. So this information needs to be easily and quickly accessible in these time critical moments. And on mobile, those time frames are even shorter and the expectations are higher. So now that you know the information, what do you do about it? You take action. So action is the ability to do work based on the information that you now know. So referring back to those examples from earlier, that's creating a time entry for the document that you reviewed, or it's ensuring that you pitch up at court promptly so you can represent your client, or making that reply to the secure message that came in. This is one of the um, kind of defining principles that we kept referring back to when we were building and designing this mobile app. Like, How do we allow for the most efficient way of accessing your information, and then when we do, how do we allow for the most potential actions without breaking context from what you found earlier? Apple statistics for the productivity category of the App Store show that 
The average session time is just one minute. That's very short. That's one minute from a potential access to action workflow. And if you think about your own use case of how you use your mobile phone, it's pull it out, do something, and you're on to the next one. Okay, those moments that matter. So I want to start with access, uh, which Calvin just mentioned is the ability to find and know information. And what I want to do is I want to start th by talking about some of the high-level problems that we see with access from when you're actually working on the go. So as mentioned earlier, your law firm is still running when you're away from the office because it's an around-the-clock operation. So traditionally, how the legal industry worked is that to prepare for the day in the morning, you're heading out to you know, court or a client meeting or a site visit. You might have been used to preparing something like a briefcase for the day where you filled it with stacks of paper like a client documents or notes on a case or your schedule for the day. But the problem with working this way was that you had to wait until you were back at the office to retrieve, on act, to retrieve or act on something. And worse, if you didn't have the piece of information that was needed in that moment, you couldn't handle it in that situation. So we then moved towards carrying around our laptops everywhere. And this was a huge step as we migrated to a digital world. But laptops are really heavy and they're super clunky and they're a burden to take everywhere. Plus, you need access to Wi-Fi if all of your documents are in the cloud, and access to internet is not always guaranteed when you're on the go. So finally, we've now moved into this world where you can access all of your client and case data in the palm of your hand, and I'm excited to show you some of the new ways that we've optimized for that in the new mobile experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through three scenarios that we have optimized, these are just examples, but of what we've optimized for in the new mobile experience from an access point of view. So situation number one. So let's say you're at court and you're standing in front of a judge and they ask if you're free on a specific date at a specific time for the next court hearing. So in the heat of the moment, how do you actually determine and answer the question, am I available or not? So what you see on the screen here is this new day view that we have built into the new uh, mobile app for Clio on the calendar. And what this does it is, is it allows you to quickly view your gaps or your conflicts when you're scheduling appointments. So what you see on the screen are these blocks of time which correspond to the, ca the color of a calendar. And so it's really straightforward. If you see white space, you know that that time slot is free. And if you see color, you know there's a conflict. I am not free. And so what you'll see in this video here is if I just long press on that white space, I can actually start filling out that appointment right there and schedule it so I don't forget about it. So all I had to do was tap on that white space, long press, and there's that new event. All right, so situation number two. So let's say you're out on the road, uh, you're traveling for work, and a member of your firm messages you about an update on a case that they were working on back at the office. So this is the new home screen on the mobile experience. And so what you'll see is if you have a new secure message, you'll see a red dot in the top right-hand corner there, as well as that uh, dot on the home tab in the bottom left. And what that means is it indicates you have an unread secure message. And so when you actually open up your inbox, which I'll show in a sec, you'll see a brand new chat interface for secure messages, which is much more akin to modern messaging apps. And so if I play this, you'll see that I can open that up, I see the chat interface, and I can start typing, or I can actually open up documents that were sent in the thread. So a really, really easy to way to see how to communicate with your firm uh, right on the go. All right, so this is situation number three. So let's say you're at the office and you've just left, but you are actually just working on a case, and you're just about to visit that client whose case you were working on. So what you now see on the new mobile experience when you open it up is this new home screen. And what we do here is we've actually given you faster access to the information we believe is relevant to you right now. And what we do is we surface the most eight most recent matters or contacts that you have worked on, either on web or on mobile. And it shows you when you looked at that particular piece of work. So if you have just looked at or worked on a, on a case, we're predicting the one you'll be looking for in a mobile situation. And that's accessible from this home screen right here. So it's one thing for me to talk about this new mobile experience and how we've optimized for these things.
But how do we know this is actually true? How do we know we've solved these problems for our customers? So as Calvin will talk about uh, in a bit, for the past year, we've been running a beta with thousands of you, our customers, to help us build this new mobile experience. And I want to share some testimonials from them that speak to this. So Benham, so Benham was one of the customers in our beta program, and he says that he really likes the feature of how matters are now available at the top of the page, the ones that he has worked on today, a smart move that improves his efficiency. So thank you, Benham. Similarly, Danielle says that she loves the new version and that accessing related info and details is a 500% improvement. So thank you, Danielle. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about action again. I'm sure we'll, regardless of the industry, we all have this problem. When the work piles up, you've got to remember things, make those mental notes to get back to it later, and then you never to catch up. I'd rather spend the time with my family than having to do work that I couldn't fit in during the day. So a lot of that work doesn't get captured because it happens in the heat of the moment. You're either out of your office or you're jumping between many different tasks and things just slip. That's okay. Um, so capturing the work in the time, though, saves you that inevitable catch up back at the work, and that efficiency extends to your support staff and your colleagues, too. So you spend the 30 seconds now instead of the five minutes later, it's a great time saving. So same as Samir, let's look at a couple examples here. Uh, as Samir spoke about earlier, this is the home screen that we're looking at with the matter. You have the recently viewed on the top and the list below. If you go into one of these, there is a matter dashboard. So that is all contextual information related to that very specific matter. If you spend a lot of time working in one of those matters, you can take a lot of action from within that dashboard. And the beauty there is that the context of that matter is carried forward into any action that you take from there onwards. So as we're going to see here, you tap into one of them, do a task, and you'll notice that the matter name and description is automatically taken through. It's one less thing that you have to remember to link now or later. Second example, I, I like to refer to these things as kind of like power user features. All of the things that you'll see are available from other places within the app, but when you, dis when you find these really quick actions, they really elevate the experience and make it a delight to use. So in this particular case, you've got your task in front of you, you do the job, and you can simply slide it. It's now complete. And you'll find the slide action available through a number of the lists that we have in the app. And then the final example, there are a few ways which we allow you to capture your time, turn into a billable time entry in the app. One is through a manual time entry, and then there is the timer, which is available through the green plus button in the bottom right there. So let's get started here. So we pull up the plus, we start the timer. The trick here is to add the details immediately. That's 30 seconds now versus the five minutes later. And you can select your matter. And if your eye is quick enough, watch when we add the description. Is TTA, which is now text snippets are available in the mobile app. They weren't before. That's a great addition. And then when you've finished, you can simply stop the timer and you have immediately a billable entry available. One other nice bit of syncing that Tim noticed <coughs> is that the timers are synced across web and mobile. So if you started that timer while you were sitting at your desk and you picked up your keys, you had to rush, it was traveling, you can simply stop the timer on your mobile device when you get to where you're going and your time is recorded. All right, so finally, I wanna talk about the combination of access and action. And so what I wanna start with by saying is we as Clio, we understand that a lot of work when you're working on the go, it takes place elsewhere on your mobile device. It's not just on the Clio app, and we understand that. But I wanna start with the question, uh, just by a show of hands. Besides Clio, how many of you have ever downloaded a legal specific app for your smartphone? So an app that was specifically made for lawyers. Okay, so, so a couple, uh, maybe about a quarter of the room. So 52% of legal professionals in the industry say they have never downloaded a legal specific app for their phones. And what this means is that instead, and they're still doing the work, right? Like it's, it's just a matter of which way you're choosing to do it, a legal specific app or a stock app. And I'll define what a stock app means. So a stock app are the ones that come pre-installed on your phone out of the box, ready to go. So if you're an iPhone user, Think about Apple Mail or Apple Notes or iCal, your calendar app. The problem with using these applications, though, is that the workflows of them are not tailored to the legal context. So they're not hooked up with your matters or your clients or your firm members because they're just designed for the everyday consumer, like me and you, outside of our work. 
I use these apps, but not in, an, in, a, but in a professional setting for as a legal professional, it's completely different because this results in a fragmented experience when you're doing legal work on your phones. These stock apps, they can't predict your next move, but we can. But we want you to use these apps. I want you to be clear because we know that it's what you like to use, they're familiar, and it's probably what your clients want to use and like to use as well when you're communicating with them. And so for us as Clio, we really see ourselves as interacting seamlessly with the rest of those apps. We wanna be that glue that ties together all of the work on your phone, no matter where it's taking place. And I'm really excited to show you some of the new ways that you can do that in the mobile app. So I'm gonna go through three situations again. So situation number one, you're on your email inbox, so you're on Gmail in this case, and you've just received an email from a colleague and it contains an attachment, which is a document. And you wanna upload that document into Clio because it relates to a matter. So in the new mobile experience, it's super easy to be viewing a document in Gmail or any mobile app email application. So if you watch the video here, you'll see that I open up the document, I just tap on this icon in the top right, I hit share, I choose Clio, and right from there, I can upload that document into Clio, choose the matter, and I can even run a timer to bill for that work. So that was just a couple of seconds, no more emailing that file to yourself, going to your computer, manually uploading it, and forgetting what it was for. So situation number two, this is kind of the opposite. So let's say you have just left the office and you've drafted up a memo for your client, which is in your documents, and the way that you communicate with your client is via email, very common. So let's say you wanna send that document to them. What do you do if you're on your phone? So let's say you've got this document open up on the Clio mobile app. You're just gonna tap that share icon in the top right. I'm gonna select mail, but I can choose any application, and you'll see that that attachment is actually pre-filled for you. And all you have to do is type in the client's name or whoever you need to send it to and fire that email off. And this can be done with any communication app. It's not just email. If you use something like Slack or WhatsApp or iMessage, any way that you communicate with your clients. All right, so the final situation. So let's say you have just left the courthouse. It's first thing in the morning. You had an early hearing and you wanna know, hey, where am I headed next? So now when you open up the new Clio calendar on mobile, you'll see this agenda view. And what we do is at the top of the screen there, you'll see that blue pill that says up next. What that does, it actually indicates where is your next appointment taking place, when is it, and what matter is it for. And so what's really neat is if I open up that event, you'll see that I can actually get directions to get there. So I can open up Apple Maps, Google Maps, uh, and I can get driving, transit, walking directions. If I'm using Apple Maps, I can even call an Uber or a Lyft. So super easy way to be navigating your day. Uh, if you're using Apple Maps, um, you can even see the prices comparing Uber and Lyft if you're price sensitive like I am. Um, and so what this means is there's no more having to print out your calendar to navigate your day because this is your trusted tool that can get you to and from all the places you need to go. And so Christopher, who was one of the customers in our beta program, he discovered this feature about using Apple Maps or Google Maps and says that it works great. It's an excellent addition. So thank you, Christopher. Okay, so Samir, I, and the rest of the team at Clear, we're incredibly proud of what we built to serve your needs. So let's take a look at where we've come from over the last year and what we're focusing on next. So the attendees, last year ClearCon is where we announced uh, the closed beta of this first app. It was the first taste of the new mobile experience. And attendees there got exclusive early access. And they signed up in droves. We had 5,000 people through the year. Okay. And then we asked those beta, well, how many, if any of you signed up for then, you'll remember this screen. Like this was the first edition of the app, just three tabs in the bottom. It's come a long way since then. I think we've done 29 releases in each one of them, bringing a new feature or improvements to the last. So we spoke to those 5,000 users and we said, give us your feedback. And they did. Over 1,000 unique feedback comments. This is fantastic. Like I personally really appreciate that high level of engagement. And I read every single piece of feedback that came in. Um, Tell us about the occasional bug. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you like. How's it fit into your workflow? How it doesn't. Anything that we can use to make the experience better for you. So there's a couple of examples of how we improved that based on the feedback. A recent change is the calendar, the agenda view just used to have a thin strip of color to kind of relate to the calendar that it was about. People told us that there wasn't enough. So we now have an avatar, a round avatar with the color, but also the initials of the calendar that it comes from. Again, super easier to relate. <coughs> also on the agenda list items, 
the matter, name, and description are shown against them. So the title may be something that doesn't make sense just reading it on its own, but as soon as you can see it related to a specific matter, you have more context about it. And then the last one, the mobile app has the ability to have a, a pin screen for additional security. And what was very annoying in the past is if you had a pin enabled, even if you jumped out of the app to go do work somewhere else in one of those other apps that Samir spoke about earlier, even if it was just for one second, you had to come back and put your pin in again. Not a very good experience. So now there is a timeout. I think it's two minutes. It could be three. Um, but if you jump out of the app to go do work somewhere else and you come back, if you're within that time frame, you can just jump straight back to doing your work within Clear. And so a lot of you are probably wondering, all right, Clio has released this brand new mobile app. Is this the end? I'm actually really excited to tell you that this is just the beginning of the new mobile experience at Clio. And there's a few things I want to call out. So number one is that the way that we've structured ourselves back at our headquarters at Clio, we're now able to deliver much more value and more features on mobile way faster. And the people who are developing and designing these features on the web desktop version of Clio are now going to be the same people designing and developing it on mobile. So the experience is going to be uniform. And if those features are available on mobile, it won't feel any different. The second thing I want to call out is iOS and Android will now have the exact same features from, uh, from now on going forward. So there will never be any discrepancy between the two. Uh, based on the t because of the technology that we're using, every feature will be available to both. Um, and so what we, really are, what we really see our mandate now as going forward is we want to connect Clio to those tools that you're using that I was talking about earlier because we want to take work off of your plate. And so as we have these conversations with you over the next few days in the hallways or at the smart bar or in the lab, we really want to know, what do you spend the most time doing on your phone when you're working on the go? Or what problems do you face when you're trying to pull something up in that time-sensitive situation? Because as I mentioned earlier, we want to be that glue that ties Clio to the rest of the work taking place on your phone. So let's take a brief walk through what we've covered this morning. We showed you how mobile technology is something that, if it's not part of your day, you should really try and make it that way. It can really become a key competitive differentiator for you. Then we showed you how the new mobile experience was optimized for those key moments. And you can look forward to Clio's mobile experience becoming richer and richer and even greater number of features than there's been before. And then lastly, please don't forget to keep sending in your feedback. I would love to keep reading them and improving the app based on that. So in, in Jack's opening keynote this morning, he spoke about the idea of a law firm going from good to great. So great law firm being one that had a high degree of legal productivity, but also a really strong client experience. And so for us on the mobile team, we see the shift towards lawyers spending more time doing work on the go and being in these mobile situations. So we believe this mes message resonates here too. A good firm practices law, but a great firm can practice law anywhere any time. So that is the new Clio mobile app in a nutshell. It's available today for all of you via a free download on the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store. And I encourage you all to download it now and come give us your feedback. If you were a user of the old Clio mobile app, it's available as an update to the existing app via the, your respective App Store. So I want to thank all of you for your time and attention today. Calvin and I, as well as other members of Clio's mobile team, will be available in the Clio lab uh, throughout the duration of the conference to show you everything in the new app, answer your questions, and most importantly, listen to your feedback about where you'd like the mobile app to go from here. Thank you so much, and we'd, be, we'd love to take some questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why did you guys take away the white space on the calendar? Uh, sorry, can you clarify? I have three associates that yep. are in court, and yep. I need to be able to look in and see if there's a white space, and I can't cover something if they can cover something. Mm -hmm. So the way it's set as a list, it's very difficult to discern who's doing what. Yeah, yeah, it's a good call out. So what we have in the new mobile app is that day view that I was showing earlier, and that actually does show you the white space for your various colleagues. So if you have the day view open, um, in the top right-hand corner, you can select which um, firm member's calendars you would like to show. And then once you have all of their calendars showing on your day view, uh, any white space there would indicate that that's a free time. And we're happy to walk you through that uh, in more depth at the lab.
Yeah, so the way that works is if you have your Clio calendar on the web, so on, on desktop, if you have calendar syncing set up with Outlook, if you accept that calendar invitation from Outlook, whether it's on your phone or on mobile, that will make the event appear in Clio, uh, both on the web. And what that does is it automatically makes it show up on mobile as well. So, you so provided that you have that syncing set up, if you accept the invitation, it's going to show up on both Clio on the web and Clio on mobile. Uh, yeah, so you can, you can create a calendar event in Clio and then invite uh, anyone to that event. Uh, if you're creating it from Clio, it will not come as an Outlook event. It will come as a Clio calendar invite, yeah. I just want to thank you for putting the map thing in there directly okay. in the mobile app, because I used to have to open it, edit it, copy it, paste it. You know, it was really yeah. a long process. So that's really, really a great feature. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Well, I had a question. Um, I usually open the mobile app, and then uh, while I'm in the process of texting, like either an assistant or the client, I like to be able to cut and paste, like for example, the client's name or something, or the case or something like that. And I, it looks like it it shows up as a picture, and it doesn't. I can't. I don't have that feature. Is there a way to copy things, or is there some some setting that I can change to make it so I can? use it and copy from the Clio app into my text. Is it just text that you're wanting to copy? Yeah, so, I mean, what I could do now is I can just literally do a screenshot and send it, yeah. but I'd prefer to have, like, the text itself. Like, for example, the client name would be great if I could just, you know, copy it or just the last name and put Mr. blah, 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 and put it in the text. So is this from within a matter or something? Like, tap and hold and you get a copy prompt to come yeah, up? Yeah, so I'll, I'll open it up and then uh, I have the matter in there. But the only thing is, so the phone number, if I click on that, it'll open my, my phone call app. Okay. The, there's an address there. But as far as the name and some other fields, I, I just can't copy it. So Yeah. So copy is not available like on everything yet, but we are getting to vote in that pretty shortly. Like, I agree with you. It's a feature that should be available. Oh, that would be yeah. great. Or also, if there's some way to you know, have a text feature within it, too, that would be wonderful. But I, I use it a lot in combination with my text. Yep, yeah. I wouldn't mind having a, a look at how you use it later to see exactly what it is you're offering. Yeah. Great. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. I was wondering if there's a way to take a photo of, say, like a whiteboard. The attorney I work for likes to draw all of that. And so if there's a way to take a photo and then upload it to Clio so that I don't have to keep on annoying him to give me the notes. <laughs> Yeah, so, so the way it works, uh, you have a couple of options. So I'm assuming you're taking that photo with your smartphone? Yeah, so yeah. I'll literally go into the conference room, take a picture with my phone, and then yeah. email it to myself. Yeah, so there, there's two ways that you can do that. So the first way is actually from, are, are you an iPhone user or Android? Yes. iPhone, so you, if you open up your Photos app, just the Apple one, when you go to that photo, um, uh -huh. and we can show you how to do this in the lab, there's a share option. And Clio's mobile app will show up as a, as a destination there where you can tap on that. And what that does is it opens up our, our mobile app and it lets you upload that photo as a document to a particular matter where okay. you can give it a name, you can put a description, all of those things. The second way you can do it is actually just in, the mo in our mobile app, you can just hit the, that green plus button and go new document. And then when you, um, when you do that, it'll give you the option to select from your photos. So you can say select from camera roll or select from photo library, and then you just navigate, find the photo from there. OK, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Great. That's right. it for time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.